Welcome to the EQ Fit Podcast. Our mission is to equip people to prosper in every aspect of their life. Whether you're at home or in the workplace, we explore practical ways of improving success, satisfaction, finding balance, and building enjoyable and beneficial relationships. Thank you for joining us. I'm glad you joined us today as we're wrapping up our exploration of the eight different competencies of emotional intelligence according to the six seconds and their website is the number six seconds.org that's their model with eight different competencies and I really like that approach I've seen other EQ assessments that have 20 or 30 different competencies and sub competencies and it's I hard to wrap your mind around that. If you have some clear competencies that you can work on, and that's the last one today that we'll finish up and it's called purpose. If you can focus in on those eight competencies, you can get a really good idea of where you are in your emotional intelligence and also how you can work on developing one or two of those which will impact the development of the others. So what is this purpose competency? Six Seconds calls it pursuing noble goals. I really like that label because it's a goal that's throughout our life. It's a goal that's big. It's something that speaks to who we are as people. And if I ask you, to put in one sentence the overarching purpose for your life, what would you say? Take a few seconds and think about that. What is the overarching purpose for your life? Is that an easy question to answer or is that a difficult question to answer? Well, I think if we look deeply into what this competency really is all about, we're going to understand it's our compass. It's where we go to get direction. Purpose is the reason that we do things. It is the why behind our decisions and our actions. Without a clear purpose, you could find yourself drifting through life. With a clear purpose, we can have direction. Now, we might shift to a new direction, But that's an intentional choice to do that instead of just drifting. Purpose is an important part of an overall category of emotional intelligence that's called self-direction. Makes sense, right? What direction do you want to go? Well, if you have a good compass, you can figure that out. And that's what this purpose is all about, this noble goal that you're looking to in your life. Think of that compass for a minute. A compass is designed to help guide us on our journey no matter where we find ourselves. So it doesn't matter where we are at any given time. The compass is there to guide us in a direction where we want to go. Having a good compass ensures that we can at least know what direction we're going. Even better, with a compass and a map, so think of planning in your life and and the strategy that you want for your life, things like that being your map, we can determine our pathway to get where we want to go. And I think that's what we all want, isn't it? To figure out, okay, what is my pathway? Yeah, there's going to be surprises in life and things that happen that make us change direction. But bottom line, if we have a general plan and we have a good compass, our pathway has a better chance of getting us where we want to go. A good compass keeps us on track at the same time. It reduces detours and... It reduces waste in things that are very important like the way we spend our time or how much energy we expend in a specific kind of effort. 
and in focus. Where do we place our focus? Well, today's a real challenge, and I want to talk about our current reality. I am seeing more and more people struggling with their sense of purpose more than ever before. Some of that may be due to the massive changes we've seen in the last few years, and some of that may be all of the noise that's in our world today. There is so much input in our world today. I may have shared this with you before, but in one day, we get about the same amount of input that our grandparents got in 365 days. So the amount of input they got in one year, we cram into one day. And it makes sense if you think about it. But here's the thing. Our brains haven't changed that much in two generations. So we're having to try and deal with all of this noise and all of this input. And I talk to people every single day who tell me I can't keep up with my emails, much less social media or anything else. And I say, how many emails do you get a day? And the average answer is 300. Think about that. How long does it take to go through 300 emails? How do you know if you got all the important ones? I mean, there's so much noise in our world today. People who have been very focused on their life purpose now find themselves drifting, driven by whatever the current circumstances that they happen to be experiencing. I'm seeing a lot of drift for people right now. It's just very hard to keep a steady course in our world today with the increasing complexity, with everything that's going on, changes is just accelerating in pace all the time. It's really, really hard to keep up with all of that. People who used to have a strong focus now frequently make more mistakes than they usually do, and they make poor decisions that they wouldn't have made in the past. And a lot of this negatively impacts themselves, and it impacts other people. Time, energy, and focus three of our most important resources that we talked about earlier are being drained away into non-productive activities because clarity of purpose is lacking for a lot of people. And I want to really focus on that in this episode today. Clarity of focus in your purpose. What is your purpose? That clarity of purpose That's really like guardrails that we put up for ourselves that keep us in our lane, the lane that we want to be in, and ensure that we function with intentionality to achieve the quality results that we want. And without that clear sense of purpose, a real focus on what is that overarching purpose in our lives, that we hold our decisions up to, that we take actions out of. Without that, we're kind of all over the place, aren't we? I think it's fair at this point to ask the question, why? Why is this happening? And let me share some numbers with you, some statistics that are coming out of several different studies, one by six seconds, some by Gallup, And just take a minute and and let this sink in. It's about five different bullet points I'm going to share with you. Number one, emotional distress is up 300%. That's huge. Almost 60% of people feel a lot of stress every day. Two-thirds of people self-identify as being lonely. Over 30 million people in the U.S., and these are all numbers for the United States, have left their workplace to find something better in the last couple of years. 30 million people. It's probably higher than that at this point. EQ, 
emotional intelligence, is declining worldwide. With the ability to navigate emotions being the biggest decline in any one EQ competency. And navigating emotions is the ability to literally navigate your emotions, not suppress them, not express them to everybody that comes along, but to really truly manage them well, be more intentional, and repurpose the energy and information you get from them into better outcomes, better decisions. That's the one that's declining. Just when we need EQ the most, it's on the decline. We live in a world of increasing complexity. Everywhere we look, we see division, we see hate, and a lot of this is promoted by industries and politicians who use this for their gain, for their personal gain. And frankly, I think there's something really wrong with that, that you would manipulate and provide misinformation and whatever it took to keep people divided and to stir up hatred. There is something real wrong with that. No wonder stress levels are at all-time highs. So how do you find your purpose? Well, You may already have a clear overarching purpose for your life. What I call that deep why, that why I live my life the way I do because that's the reason behind the decisions I make, the actions I take, my behavior, the things that I say. If so, good for you. If you have that clear sense of what your purpose is, good for you. Now, you may reflect on it from time to time uh, to ensure that it's serving you well. Does it give you a good standard you can hold your decisions up to? Does it help you to be intentional and give you good direction? And if that's the case, good for you again. But it's good to reflect on that every once in a while. If your overarching purpose is unclear, if you're not sure about it, or if you feel it's not working very well for you, here are some things I want you to consider. Number one, what is it that you are personally passionate about? I think that's a great place to start. What are you passionate about? Number two, what motivates you and gives you energy? That's also a great measure of where your purpose and focus might be. Number three, what impact do you want to have on the world and on the people around you? That could play into your overarching purpose. Number four, do you need to let go of things that you're holding on to because they're holding you back? Maybe your purpose is unclear because you're holding on to things that are keeping you stuck and you're not able to move forward, not able to generate that clear sense of purpose to move forward. And I, those four questions, I think if you ask yourself those questions and then are honest with yourself in your answers, you will start to think and feel and be able to make decisions about what your overarching purpose might look like. So we all experience failure, betrayal, harm from others, and different roadblocks in our lives. That's given. We're just going to live those things out. What we do with those is what's important. Sometimes we have to go through some difficult things to find our true purpose. Things that, while they're painful and discouraging, put us through a crucible that refines us and brings us to a better place. I don't define myself 
if as a failure because I've failed. I don't define myself as a loser because I've lost. I don't define myself as a victim, but I have been a victim of someone else's hurtful decisions and actions. So how can we choose to see ourselves and our place in the world? How can we choose that to give us a greater sense of what our overarching purpose should be and how we truly want to live the rest of our lives? What is the legacy that we want to leave behind? I think it's time to take just a minute and reflect on some of what we've been talking about. What life experiences have you had that have impacted your purpose? Or maybe that should impact your purpose. What have you been through in life? And what can you learn from that? That's a key choice point right there. You can choose to go the victim road. And there's, I'm sorry for people that are victims. We're all victims. We are all hurt by others. We're all, to some degree, betrayed by others, have wrongs done against us. All of us live through that. And I truly have compassion and empathy for people who go through traumatic experiences In our lives, though, we do have a choice in how we respond to those things. And we should see from those things that we've been through maybe some learning points. Is there something you can learn from a specific kind of situation that you went through? And as those start to accumulate through your life, What do all of those lessons look like? What are you learning from those? And maybe that's driving you in a direction that is going to refine and shape your overarching purpose. Think of things that you're passionate about. We've talked about that. I want to talk for a minute about this EQ skill or competency that we call purpose having that, that, those noble goals, that focus on here's what I would like to accomplish, here's why I do what I do. It's an EQ skill and practice as well. If you can shape and define your overarching purpose for your life, it's not only going to give you direction, help you be more successful, more satisfied, it's going to allow you to have a greater impact on your world and on the people around you. It's the why behind your decisions and your actions. I want to read you a a quote. I've talked about the title that Six Seconds gives to this competency. And I want to read you a quote that I really like uh, about what I'm calling overarching purpose what Six Seconds calls pursuing noble goals. Pursuing a noble goal facilitates integrity and ethical behavior, which helps you maintain focus, inspire others, and access your full power and potential. I'm going to read that again. It's that good. Pursuing a noble goal facilitates integrity and ethical behavior, which helps you maintain focus, inspire others, and access your full power and potential. All of that sounds pretty good, doesn't it? That could be you. When you feel adrift, what do you think about to find your best path forward? Reach for your compass. And if you don't have one, build one. Build your compass by building your noble goal, your overarching purpose for your life. That will guide you back to where you want to be. Thank you for joining us for this episode. If you have any questions about this week's episode or maybe a suggestion for future episodes you'd like us to explore, 
please contact us through our website at eqfit.org. For more information and inspiration, connect with us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube at EQFit.